And so this is my exempt interest area just for reporting purposes on my worksheet. So now I'm, I'm at 101,970, 101,970, 101,970, okay? And then 88,120, 88,120, okay? Now we mentioned before that sometimes it's possible you might get like a 1099 div that has an interest uh, component in it. So in other words, if I go back on over here and I go to my, if I got a 1099 and I say, okay, I'm going down to my, now I've got my 1099 for dividends. So I'm going to look for the 1099 div income. And then I'm going to say this was investment one or something, but they put over here a, a tax exempt interest line on the 1099 dividend which is kind of unusual because you would think that that would that would be on a 1099 int but again because you you have some situations where the same institution possibly is dealing with the the uh dividends which are related to investing in stocks and bonds which are uh interest which is related to investing in bonds then sometimes you might have an interest component on the 1099 div which should be fairly well uh, shown on the form and then the data input form for most software is pretty easy to find so if it was another let's say five hundred dollars there the data input is easy generally then because your software will kind of match it up and then when you pull on over uh when you pull on over it still shows up over here right so now i've got the 800 and if i mirror that in my software i had the 300 plus the 500 is the total 800 of the exempt amount i could sum these up du, 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 du. right and so so the only thing that's a little tricky about that is that is that then when you're trying to double check your numbers and like where did that 800 come from you're probably lining up all of your 1099 interest forms and then sometimes you're going to have this 1099 that was a dividend and that sometimes the dividend forms and the interest forms are kind of clumped together because they come from the same institution or you have a dividend form that has this interest component on it which which makes it a little bit harder to kind of organize your documents sometimes when you're doing the data input or checking your numbers now note you could have a similar thing going on with like pass through entities so if you get a if you get a k1 or something like that then you could have a, a similar kind of thing so so like a pass through entity k1 for like a partnership for example and you could say okay i had a now note like if you're doing individual taxes you might say hey look i'm not going to do the business tax returns meaning i'm not going to do the partnership tax return but you might be willing to say if you if someone else does the partnership tax return i'm willing to take the k1 and do the data input from the k1 because that's usually fairly straightforward uh, from an individual income tax preparation